What is going on in the Titans front office? This is a bonus episode of the Music City Audible podcast. We are going to talk about what the heck is going on, the latest reports and rumors surrounding Mike Vrabel, Rand Carthon, Amy Adams Strunk, and the Titans. Let's get to it. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Music City Audible podcast presented by Broadway Sports Media in partnership with 440 Sports. I'm Justin Graver. With me, as always, Justin Mello. And we wanted to take the time to record a bonus episode contained all by itself to cover the extent of these Mike Vrabel rumors. Is he going to be traded to the Patriots? Is he going to be fired? Is Rand Carthon going to be fired? Is the whole organization going to clean house? What on earth is going on at the top of the Titans organization? Justin, let's start with some of the facts. We're going to take it back a ways, a a few weeks, maybe even a couple months when these rumors first started circulating. Titans obviously struggled throughout much of this season. And then the the reports started to emerge that Mike Vrabel maybe could be traded at some point in the offseason, that maybe the Titans would look to part ways with him. And then there were conflicting reports. The Titans have no desire to part ways with Mike Vrabel. Ah, but maybe Mike Vrabel wants out of the Titans, and it's not up to the Titans firing him. It's that he will demand himself be traded or, or let go in some way. So much connecting the Titans to the Patriots, uh, connecting Mike Vrabel specifically, I mean, to the Patriots. And then, you know, some of these reports get turned into... Well, it's all just New England media creating this false narrative in an attempt to get Vrabel to be the Patriots head coach. There's still everything going on with Ohio State and Ryan Day and and the chance that Vrabel might want to go back to his alma mater and coach there. So many rumors swirling, but things have really ramped up in the past week and a half or so as the reports come from all over the place. It's no longer just New England media. It's Ian Rappaport, Diana Rossini, Jacina Anderson, Jordan Schultz. There's so much smoke here. That, you know, the classic saying, where there's smoke, there's fire. But the latest thing that dumped fuel on the fire, I think, this is sort of one of the clearer reports we've gotten. Jared Stillman went on 102.5 The Game on Monday morning and reported that this is not just him reporting what he thinks. I know people don't necessarily like or trust Jared Stillman all that much. He was right that the Titans were going to trade Kevin Byard, so he he has you know, some credibility here. And this isn't just him reporting what he's thinking. He said, per my league source. So this, regardless of what you think of Stillman, maybe you don't trust his sources, but this, he definitely is reporting this from somebody, not just from his brain. And what he said was that Mike Vrabel is going to demand that ownership hire a person in a position that will oversee both Vrabel and Rand Carthon, someone that would have final say over the roster. He also said that Mike Vrabel does not want full control of roster decisions. And there was a lot, there, a lot has been made lately about Mike Vrabel wanted the Titans to go a different direction at GM when they hired Rand Carthon. And he wanted more control over the roster. Well, Stillman is saying his source reports that Vrabel does not want total control. What Vrabel wants is more clearly defined roles for the assistant general managers, Chad Brinker and Anthony Robinson. Stillman also mentioned it's still possible that Mike Vrabel could be traded to either the Washington Commanders or the New England Patriots. And he even said that Mike Vrabel could still be fired as early as Monday, depending on how these meetings go with Amy Adams Strunk and how these demands go from Vrabel. He cited blowups between Vrabel and ownership that have happened recently in the past. So a whole lot going on here. But at the end of the day... <laughs> It sounds like the Titans haven't made any decision. It doesn't sound like there's something in the works that we just aren't aware of yet. It sounds like they have a lot to sort through, and we're going to be here to help everyone sort through it. But it sounds like a total shit show right now, Justin. What's your take on all this variable madness? It, it does sound like a shit show, in all honesty, right? And and and, and it does, I mean, something could be imminent. Something might not be imminent, right? I think you said it. But the point is, they're working through this process, and things can move quickly or they can move slowly. We'll see, right, how things transpire. Um, my take is uh, more frustration, I-, I think, than anything, is the position that I'm taking right now. Um, you and I haven't really commented on this over these past couple of weeks. We've sort of been ignoring it, uh, but it- it's-, it's been a tough situation to navigate, a tough topic to navigate, because there's so much being said from so many different places that it's kind of hard to sort through what's fact and what's fiction. I mean, even before all this came out on Monday, in the past couple of weeks, right, you had the, uh, was it uh, Michael Fabiano say something, and then he came back and said, oh, I had bad info regarding his contract. Michael uh, Lombardi. I think it was Michael Lombardi, but same. same Sorry, idea. Michael Lombardi. Uh, you had Diana Rossini say a bunch of things, and we've always thought she's the one that's sort of 
Uh, Vrabel probably speaks to the most in the national media. You've had Ian Rappaport say some things. Ian Rappaport said the relationship's a good relationship. Well, we know that Ian Rappaport is sort of Rand Carthon's go-to guy in the media. Um, We've seen things from ESPN. Adam Schefter has said things. Uh, I believe Field Yates has said things. Uh, What's the other guy? Jeremy Fowler. Jeremy Fowler has said things like there's just so much coming from so many different places. Uh, I think what's fair is for us to agree. And at this point, I think it's, it's gone far away enough that we can is that where there's smoke, there's fire, right? There's obviously something going on between Mike Vrabel and ownership between Mike Vrabel and Rand Carthon that Mike Vrabel is not happy with. And it could culminate with him no longer being the head coach of the Tennessee Titans. Now I'll say this. I don't know if I'm overreacting, uh, I think I'm, you know, maybe I'm a bit of a Mike Vrabel apologist. I, I am a big fan of his. I think he's an excellent, I, for, when I say fan, I mean, I'm a fan of the way he coaches the football team. I think he's a very good head coach. I think he's the correct head coach for this football team moving forward and has been this entire time. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll say this. When they went through this process of hiring a general manager, um, make no mistake, when you have a head coach that you like, and they did, whether you like Mike Rabel or not, the listener, and whether you want him gone or not, there is no debating that ownership really liked the head coach they had in place, period. So when you're going through that process of hiring a GM and you have a head coach that you really like, you better make sure that that process satisfies the head coach that you like and that he continues to like you back, right? You don't do anything that pisses him off. And it sounds like the Titans failed him throughout that process, right? Yep. They did not reach a conclusion that satisfied him. And look, if they didn't like him and they didn't care, who cares? Yeah. You don't have, you don't got to keep them happy. You don't got to keep them satisfied. Right? But well, you liked them. There's ahead. even I'll more to this. Even though you spoke for about 4 minutes to start, I'll let you interrupt. Go <laughs> I, ahead. I just think there's even more to this of what you're saying here about the process. Not only did they do something that Mike Vrabel wasn't necessarily happy with or satisfied with, the reporting that we've heard is that they told or at least indicated to Mike Vrabel that they were going to hire his preferred candidate, Ryan Cowden, as the general manager. And then something happened, whether – and there are conflicting reports out there about what happened. Maybe the NFL league stepped in and said, we really want you to hire this minority candidate because it's a better for our league image. Or maybe Rand Carthon blew away Amy Adams Strunk in, her, in his interview with her for this position. But the bottom line is – they indicated to Vrabel they were going to hire Cowden, and then they hired Rand Carthon as a general manager. Whether or not Mike Vrabel and Rand Carthon get along, there's some level of trust that's broken there between ownership and Vrabel that could have set this whole thing in motion, you know, about a year ago from this time. Right, exactly. And look, uh, the, all the allegations, I'll say this. I think Rand Carthon was a very qualified candidate. I've pat myself on the back a couple times. You might remember this. I identified him in an article the day that John Robinson was fired as a potential outside candidate because he had gotten some buzz in league circles already. I think he was a very good candidate. I think he did a very good job in his first year. Titans didn't win a lot of football games. I think, did a, I think he did a good job acquiring talent through the draft, through free agency, through undrafted free agency. I think he did a, a good job. Um, there's no way the Titans are firing a first-year minority general manager, right? Let's be honest, and I don't think that's a bad thing to say. Um, they're, they're not firing. First of all, you don't fire a first year general manager, period. Right. In my opinion, unless you have period. a total disaster, like maybe, total, right. <laughs> if, if right. the pan, if Scott Fitterer had been a first year GM right. and he yes. trades he away the farm fired for, for a quarterback that can't really play at this level so far. Yeah. 100% fully agreed. Right. But, uh, he did a good job. Does not deserve to be fired for an organization. Let's, let's be honest. Elephant in the room that was recently accused of like racism and racist practices. You remember when that came out about uh, there's no way they can handle the optics of firing a first year general manager, let alone a first year minority candidate, a minority general manager. And he doesn't deserve to be fired. He did an outstanding job in my opinion, in his first off season, all things considered, but the failure to make sure that your head coach that you really like and wanted to keep happy, the failure to keep him happy with the process that you conducted is a organizational failure, and it's at the top. I'd go as far as saying, and, and again, maybe this is a stretch, it it almost takes me back to the Tommy Smith, like Ken Wisenhunt, mm. 
levels of incompetence. Like if this is true and Mike Vrabel departs the franchise and trust was broken and yada, yada, then it's bad and it's incompetent. In fact, it would certainly be, I think, the first black eye um, on Amy Adams Strunk's tenor as 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 full control, you know, as team owner, team control owner. So um, certainly this is ugly. It's not good. Uh, I, I'm frustrated. I'm disappointed. I hope they can sort through this again. Uh, part of me is still hoping that Mike Vrabel remains the head coach of the Tennessee Titans because I think he's an outstanding head coach. Um, but I don't know, man. I'm starting to buy into this a little bit. I'm starting to buy into it being very possible that Mike Vrabel's coached his last game for the Tennessee Titans. So there, there are other layers to this entire thing, too. This whole, All the drama surrounding this, I think, if you're one of those people that's saying, well, these are just reports, these are bogus, we haven't heard anything concrete from anyone, something that is concrete that isn't necessarily telling you much but definitely signals that there's some sort of indecision going on is how they conducted the final day at the at the team facility on Monday. The players gather right. gather right. in the locker room to do a, a final media round, and they clean out their lockers. And typically, it's not always, but typically, Mike Vrabel will hold a team meeting and kind of give everyone a send off. Thank you all for thank you all for this season. Work hard in the off season. You know, this is the last time you'll be in the same room as this group of people because every year there's changes, blah, blah, blah. Some sort of heartfelt wrap up the year speech or just indicating to the team what's going to happen. Hey guys, I know there's been a lot of rumors in the media. Don't believe what you're hearing. I'm going to be back. Rand's going to be back or we're not going to be back. Something's going to change. Like you would think there'd be some sort of team meeting there. And in addition to that, Mike Vrabel usually holds a press conference on the last day of the season. He usually holds a press conference the day after every single game they play, but but also especially on the last day of the season this Monday. Um, and they didn't hold, hold a press conference today. They said that Mike Vrabel may speak later in the week to be D, to be scheduled. So that just indicates for sure that something is going on. There is some yeah. sort of indecision with the future of how this team will proceed. There are more layers. Mike Vrabel was asked directly last week, do you want to be here? Do you want to be the coach of the Titans? And he said, of course I want to be the coach of the Titans. I want to work with Ran and bring Super Bowls to this organization. So he went out and said to the media directly that he wants to work with Ran Carthon to bring a Super Bowl to Nashville. He also said that A.J. Brown wouldn't be traded as long as he was the head coach, right? But we kind of learned later that that was not his decision. That was John Robinson. But maybe this won't be his decision either. You know, maybe the team decides we want to – we don't like all the dysfunction and the arguing, the drama that's going on in the front office here. We, we want a collaborative environment. And the idea that Mike Vrabel wants someone to oversee him and Rand Carthon, if this report is true, that tells you a little bit about how Mike Vrabel feels about Rand Carthon, I think. He, maybe he doesn't want total control of the roster, but he obviously, if he's if he's advocating for a person to be the like a Floyd Reese type of person, is how Jared Stillman described it on the radio today. Someone that 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 person would presumably be someone that Mike Vrabel wants in that role and trusts in that role, which is almost like giving him the final say over whatever Rand Carthon. If this guy is the overruler, this person, guy or girl, is the overseer of them both, and Mike Vrabel is the one demanding that this role exist. You'd think he would want some say in who that person would be, in which case it kind of conflicts, contradicts the report that Mike Vrabel doesn't want total control. And there's a lot of ways to read this. It could be that you think Mike Vrabel doesn't trust Rand Carthon. It could be that you think Mike Vrabel just wants everyone to have a more defined role and and focus on coaching his team and getting the players that he needs to to, exceed, to succeed with this, you know, uh, with the style of play that he preaches. And I think... It all boils down to, do you trust these that these guys can collaborate effectively? Because we all know that organizational dysfunction, you know, when there is not collaboration, when people in the front office disagree with how to run the team, it's usually a disaster product on the field. So I don't know. Mike Vrabel obviously proved in his time in Tennessee that he is a good head coach. We, you saw it on Sunday in the win over Jacksonville, a 5-1 team playing for nothing, going out there basically just to spoil the, the hopes of their division rival. And they... They really beat the Jags pretty handily. The final score was a little closer than I think the most of the game felt. And you saw a lot of good coaching in that game. You know, the defense was prepared for what the Jags were going to do on offense. They had a commitment to the ground game. The offensive line looked inspired, blocking their butts off to get Derrick Henry over 150 yards in what could potentially be his last game in Tennessee. So we've seen this team refuse to quit and play hard for their head coach despite playing for nothing in the final game of the season. 
I don't think you can say that Mike Vrabel has lost the locker room by uh, in any stretch. Yeah. So what is the what is the disconnect? If you're a Mike Vrabel hater out there, you're someone who thinks the Titans should move on from Mike Vrabel. I'd love to know why you think that. Is it that some people are calling him a diva? I've, I've tweeted out this Jared Simmons report, and I've got a ton of replies about Mike Vrabel is a diva. Move on from him. If he thinks he should have control over what Amy is doing with the organization, then good riddance to him. They should trade him. Blah blah blah. So I don't know how people feel about Mike Vrabel right now, but all I know is this is extremely interesting what's going on. And really, despite any report you might read, no one knows what's going to happen because the Titans don't even know what's going to happen yet. <laughs> well, I, I always, in these situations, when, when, when GM's head coaches are vying for control, um, I always think of the old Bill, Par I believe it was Bill Parcells quote, um, if you want me to make dinner, I, I'd at least like to buy some of the groceries. Right. And, and that and that could be how Mike Vrabel feels here. Right. He got saddled with a GM uh, that I mean, I, I think we could almost safely say at this point he did not choose. Right. One, maybe that he didn't even want. Right. If the Ryan Cowden rumor or report is to be believed right. uh, and you're expected to go out there and coach this football team and, 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 and demand results. Right. Like the results are demanded of you. And one of the most demanding positions in all of sports, right, being the head coach of a pro football team, um, I'd at least like to have – I at least would like to have a guy in place that's on the same page with me from a talent acquisition standpoint. And I don't know that they're on the same page. I, I, I mean, we said months ago that the offseason strategy almost signaled that they probably weren't right. on the same page to begin with, right? They kind of dipped their toe into the rebuilding waters, right, where you drafted – a quarterback and running back of the future, but you retained Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry and wanted to win this year and tried to surround them with some veteran guys like a DeAndre Hopkins or an Andre Dillard instead of just trying to build this thing from the ground up, right? So there was a bit of an in-between strategy uh, taken this past offseason, and, and, and I think that's probably a, a pretty good representation right of Mike Rabel and Rand Carthon potentially not being on the same page. Yeah. So There was another um, report last week that... Uh, Rand Carthon, with the 11th overall pick, wanted to draft Zay Flowers, and Mike Vrabel wanted to draft Peter Skaronsky. Who won? Right. Obviously, we know who won. If this report is true, we know who won. Mike Vrabel, who is not the GM, is not supposed to have control of the roster, made the draft pick. So there is clearly dysfunction here, and I think we're going to learn a lot this week. The longer the Titans wait, the longer they drag this out, the worse it is for the future of the organization. If they do move on from Mike Vrabel, they need to get ahead of it so that they can start the, the interview process and get in on this hiring cycle before the top candidates are scooped up and off the market. If they're going to keep Mike Vrabel, they need to send that message. They need to announce that, all you know, they don't need to acknowledge necessarily all the media reports, but they Mike Vrabel needs to hold a press conference and basically say that the future of this team is in good hands and, and reassure the fan base and the the players and the media that cover this team and any potential free agents that you may be trying to sign with this team, like reassure everyone that this is fine. And that all of this has been nonsense, bogus reports from media who want to stir up controversy and drama because it gets clicks. But at and the end of the day, Justin, I want to ask you if the Titans did pursue the trade Mike Vrabel route. I think there's a lot of questions from fans out there. What kind of draft capital could Mike Vrabel fetch? There's some people that think, if you trade to the Patriots, they'll send you the number three overall pick. And maybe you swap three and seven. Patriots move down four spots and they get Mike Vrabel and the Titans move up to number three. That seems a little far-fetched to me. What is the actual realistic compensation for Mike Vrabel if he were to be traded? Before I answer that question, I want to say two quick things. Uh, number one, uh, you talked about moving quickly. Yes, you have to move quickly. Not just so you can start the search, but also... Um, so whoever you hire, you allow that person a chance to assemble a staff mm -hmm. right before everyone is gone. This whole staff is Mike Vrabel disciples, right? Like if, if Vrabel goes, you think Tim Kelly is staying? You think Shane Bowen is staying? You think Charles London is staying? You think Justin Houghton is staying? You think Coach Haas is staying? You think Tony Dews is staying? You think Pat O'Hara is staying? You think Terrell Williams, who I don't think I mentioned yet, is staying? Like everyone is gone essentially, right? So you have to give the new coach a, an opportunity to assemble their own staff. Uh, and, and keep in mind, I, I go way back to 2011 um, when they didn't get rid of Jeff Fisher until February, which was outlandish, right? And they released a statement in January, Bud Adams did, saying that Jeff Fisher was going to be the head coach of the football team and return for a 17th season 
And they they essentially chose Bud Adams over Vince Young. Oh, sorry, they chose Jeff Fisher over Vince Young, right? And then a month later, they get rid of Fisher. And what happens? You promote from within. You go with Mike Munchak, who had never coordinated an NFL team or an offense. Every other team's essentially assembled their staff. What does Mike Munchak's, Mike Munchak's staff look like? He hired an OC that was last coaching in the USFL. He hired a defensive coordinator that he played with. Uh, back in the early 90s, yeah. uh, uh, one that was, uh, I also believe, uh, coaching on the team at some point in the 90s with him as well and Jerry Gray. So it's like you got to give a guy a, a chance to assemble a staff and time, right? So this decision has to be made. It has to be made quickly. Uh, in terms of the draft compensation, no, there's no way in hell I see the Washington Commanders trading the number two overall pick for him or the New England Patriots trading the number three overall pick for him. There's no way both of those teams want quarterbacks. Washington is perfectly positioned to get a quarterback at number two, one of the top two quarterbacks. There's no way they're moving out of that pick. Um, even New England at three yet, they're, you know, they're probably missing out on Caleb Williams and Drake May. Maybe that makes it slightly more likely than it does the, the commanders, but I still don't think you're trading the number three overall pick, even swapping three for seven. Again, probably a bit likelier than trading three outright, but I'd still put it in the unlikely bucket. Um, I think if you're trading him to one of these two teams, and I do think it would probably be one of those two teams that show the most interest, the Washington Commanders or the New England Patriots, you, you got to ask for the second round pick this year, which would be in the early 30s. That would be a very good pick. Uh, maybe you get a fourth round pick this year or next year, but certainly you've got to get a first round pick in 2025 as well. I don't think you can trade Vrabel without getting a first round pick back. Yes, you'd have to concede you're not getting one this year because those two teams you're dealing with are picking too early. But if you get a second round pick this year, you you could really use one of those. You know, you only have one of them and you don't have your third rounder. That gives you a chance to pick another player very early, potentially in the 30s. Um, and it allows you to address another need and you figure they need to, you, you'd like to walk away with three top 50 picks in this class. Yeah something you don't have right now. And then, hey, you never know what happens with that 2025 first. It could be the number one pick in the draft, just like the Chicago Bears ended up with in the Bryce Young trade, right? So I, I think if you're if you're trading Vrabel, you get a second this year, you get like a fourth either this year or next, and then, but certainly you get a first in 2025 as well. Anything less than that and you have failed. You have not gotten fair value in return for your very good head coach. Yeah, and I think to me the biggest point that you made there is that you got to get something. You can't fire him. You cannot fire no. Mike Vrabel when he no. would fetch you something on the trademark. If you know you want to part ways and go a different direction – do not fire him. Explore the trade right. market. Get what you can. Even if you end up not getting as much as you just said, get something over just firing him and go and entering the hiring process with you know no extra draft capital for to entice whatever other head coach is coming in for in, to replace Variable. So I think that's where it is right now. We again we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. If I had to predict, I don't know. I've gone back and forth on this because I a week ago I would have said this is all nonsense. This nothing's going to change, but. With everything that's going on, you know, the most telling thing to me, like I said before, is that Vrabel hasn't held a press conference. They hasn't had that end of season meeting with the team. That to me is the biggest tell that something is going on. And maybe nobody 100%. knows what is going on, but definitely something to keep an eye on. So we will be back as soon as something breaks with this story. We will tape yeah. an emergency podcast to give you our reaction and analysis into whatever has gone down. If nothing happens, if it ends up Vrabel and Carthon stay, then the Titans have a little bit of stability, I guess, heading into next season. All right, so that's it for this bonus episode. Thanks to everyone who tuned in. For more content, look, we did another episode on Monday talking about the Titans' final game of the season, Derrick Henry's potential last game as a Titan, where we stand with the draft order at the end of the 2023 regular season. So check out that episode. It's up on the feed now if you if you haven't already listened to it. And uh, we'll be back again as soon as something happens with this variable, whole variable situation. So thank you again, thanks again, everyone, for listening. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, Music City Audible Podcast. Drop a comment below. What do you think's going on with Mike Variable? Do you want him to stay? Do you want the Titans to trade him? Do you think this is all nonsense? Let us know in the comments. Follow Justin on Twitter at JustinM underscore NFL. You can follow me at Titans Film Room. Again, we'll be back as soon as we know something. Until then, y'all stay safe out there and tighten up. A Broadway Sports Media Production.